Start the recording. Start the broadcast. We'll start in about two minutes, everyone. Well, actually, it looks like one to two minutes. Well, it looks like it's about 3.30 Eastern Standard Time, so we'll start the presentation. I'm Becky Rears, your session moderator. Welcome to the 3.30 to 4.15 Sakai technical session track titled sakai to go a multi-platform Sakai mobile app. Your presenter is Sila Kayo. Sila Kayo is the CTO and co-founder of Kuzlogic, a mobile-first startup based in Ulu, uh oh, I didn't ask how to say that, um, Finland. He is presenting from Finland. Um, I have a couple of housekeeping things and then we'll start. Um, please note that all the attendees are muted for the session, but if you have questions, enter them in the GoToWebinar questions box. You can enter the questions at any time and we'll address them at the end of the session in about a half an hour or so. This session is being recorded and it will be available at a later date on the Aperio YouTube channel, and please, if you have any problems with your video or audio, enter a comment in the questions box, and I'll try to help you as soon as I can. Please welcome Sila Kayo. Oops, I got to change to you. Sorry, Sila. <laughs> Yay! Can I can you see, see your presentation. Okay, so you see the, uh, the yep. whole presentation. Yep, we're ready to go. Okay, uh, but it's evening here in Finland, so good evening and good morning for anyone in state or good afternoon, depending on your uh, timetable. So, my name is Sila Kayo, and I'm living in Finland, as if so, like it's located in northern Europe. It's the land of Nokia, probably many people know Nokia. Nokia is actually from Finland. So I am the CTO of a small startup called Kuslogic, where we focus on uh, developing multi platform uh, mobile applications. And uh, it's a two person company, so it's owned by, it's a, let's, say, let's call it mini business. And uh, we actually have uh, uh, several years of experience writing, uh, mob developing hard, doing soft hardware and software for mobile device. As, as I said earlier, uh, Finland is the land of Nokia, so we've been working for big names like Nokia, consulting other companies like Samsung, Huawei, etc. So. <laughs> we have decided to set up our own mobile shop business and uh, one of our first projects is uh, this Sakai mobile app. So how it all started? Uh, we actually started a few years ago uh, and we just wanted to uh, develop some mobile learning app. So or learning new languages, you could use it to learn English, French, or whatever you wanted. So, because of my personal extensive uh, experience with Java, I decided to do, do, do a Java. The server side was implemented only in Java. But and then at some point we realized that okay, maybe we shouldn't limit ourselves to uh, 
language learning tools. Maybe we could do some LMS, mobile app LMS. And since uh, we discovered Sakai, and Sakai was already freely available, available Java-based, and with my experience doing Java stuff, uh, we decided to take Sakai as at starting as a starting point and then develop on top of it. So that's how we came up with the, uh, this whole Sakai, mobile Sakai idea. And uh, we also noticed that on the market they, they, there's not yet a real, well may, there might be but uh, not what we wanted. So we decided to make our own and something that we could uh, use and like also offer to other people for using. So our aim was to like we implement some an experience on power with like Facebook or Google Plus mobile app. So those are the ones that are setting the standard of a mobile experience. So because nowadays mobile users they use a lot of app on the device and they they, uh, they really know what the device is capable of. So they, they kind of they, they want to be able with the device to like do real time chatting, video conferencing, like syncing documents that uh, local documents like from the or from the cloud to like to their device and from the device to the cloud or take picture directly from the device and upload it and you know receive push notification etc. So that was the kind of experience we wanted to implement on top of Sakai. So uh, of course uh, until we can show some screenshot it's hard to believe that we actually have something working. So I decided to share some few, few, few screenshots. For those people following the, our Twitter feed, you can see some screenshots. Of course, those are the UI on those screenshots are it's, it's going to be updated. So it's not the final design because we are working with some designer to make the final uh, like some final design that will be even better than what we currently see. So this screenshot I'm currently presenting is to show the kind of experience we wanted. So here you can see, uh, so we wanted to this kind of experience whereby the user, when you take your phone out of your pocket, you launch the Sakai app, you can immediately go to the main screen and have a bird view of what is happening. So you don't need to have to dig into each different tools to, to, to understand that, okay, here there's a new, not I have two new notifications from these tools or three new notification from this tool. So our bird eye view, as soon as you open the app, you can already see those red counters that gives you an idea of what is new in your Sakai. So if there's some nothing new, you can even put it back in your pocket. Let's, so, let's wait a moment. I think there might be something wrong. I want to, can people see the presentation? Could someone send me a message and let me know if you can see the presentation? Okay. Just wanted to be sure because someone sent, said to me that they were getting a black screen and I couldn't respond to them. Thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt. I was worried that you weren't seeing anything. So everyone can see. Yes. I just got back 10 so, responses. Uh, You're set. Sorry for the interruption. Okay. Oh, another picture is... Uh, so continuing this kind of bird view uh, approach, we wanted the user, as soon as you open you launch your app, you can go to a specific screen, press a button, and see uh, like a notification dashboard of all your recent events. So it's, of course, I know in the upcoming Sakai 10, 11, there, there will be this uh, mobile, you know, this Sakai dashboard, but what we implement here is something slightly different because it includes all the push notification you got. So you can, every time, you don't need to, again, navigate into some uh, very deep level of the app. You can just click, press a button, and then see the latest uh, notification that from, from all your, all your uh, different sites. And then 
clicking on clicking on, on one of the items takes you directly to the site or to the tool that produces the, the that event and you can either you know take action from there. And you can as well after you, you are done reading you can just mark them as red so that next time when you take the phone out of your pocket if there's no counter showing no badge showing some even then the, that means there's nothing happened. You can just put your phone back into your pocket. So, and again, this is a work in progress. This design it will uh, change before final release. Another feature I'm showing is the uh, native push notification. Of course, I, I uh, our presentation in our presentation we say we have implementation for uh, Android, iOS, and Windows Phone. But currently, yes, I'm showing Android because Android is kind of our lead implementation. iOS, the functionality is there, but the UI is not up to level we are ready to show. So uh, the Android app will come out first, and then later the iOS, and then followed by the Windows Phone. So here I'm showing uh, a native push notification. So it was created. Uh, of course, later in my slide, I will explain the technical side, how it's done on the server side. But I'm currently showing some screenshots from the uh, our mobile client. So whenever you, there's a, a new announcement or whatever, a new chat message or a new forum message, you get a push notification, a, a native push notification. So it goes to the status bar of your phone. You swipe down and see those notifications. And you can click on that notification directly, and then it takes you into the sac Sakai app into the tools that generated the notification and you can see more info. Of course, and uh, that's really better than the current mechanism of Sakai of because currently Sakai for every new message or just sends you an uh, email notification. And the reason why we say it's really better than Sakai email notification because the email notifications of Sakai are most of the time ignored by the student because most of them do not even have the uh, institutional email account set up on the phone. So whenever there's a new Sakai email, they just it, well they fall, they don't check it. They, they, they are not aware of it. But without Sakai app, you get a notification pushed to your device. Of course, you can ignore it, just swipe it away if you think it's not important. You can even mute some specific sites that you can mute temporarily or permanently some, some sites that you think are spamming you. And in the near future, uh, we, we are planning to have integration with smart watches because as some, those of you who know how to write native, native apps, you know that notifications that are shown on the screen, you can make them appear as well on the smartwatch. So we are planning to have support for Android Wear and Apple Watch so that all your notifications, you don't even have to take your phone out of your pocket, you can just look at your watch and see your, the new push notification. <coughs> and uh, here I'm showing another one more reason why the push notif native push notification is are, are, are better than uh, sending emails. So uh, here, when whenever, for example, if you get a lot of announcement message, instead of spamming your not your status bar with uh, many notifications, we can st we start to group them into one. So we collapse. 10, uh, if you get 10 notifications, you merge them into one, then you get a single notification that tells you that, okay, you have three new messages. And then clicking on that will take you on that uh, notification uh, this on this uh, screen like this, where you will see those notifications and you can mark them as red or do whatever you want with them or ignore them. So it's, that will reduce spamming you with uh, it will reduce the amount of spams, let's say, call it spam, sent to the user. Of course, the UI design I showed is still work in progress. Uh, the final design will look better, and there are some other, uh, some of our clients, if they need us to ma even make change to match their own design, uh, 
the design language, we can even do that. So it's very customable the UI. Uh, we we share some old screenshots our, on our Twitter feed because we, our website is not live yet, but you can already see some old screenshots there. But this, and this is the so it's just tweeters and Sakai to go. So uh, so that was a, a quick tease, teaser because. Uh, this is supposed to be a technical session, so I'm not, I'm not going to, to dig into the technical details how we did it, because since we've been posting emails in my screenshot, people have been contacting us and asking how we do this, how we do that. So in this presentation, I will try to explain how we did. Of course, it, it cannot be explained in, in this a small presentation like this, so feel free to contact me even later and ask more questions and I will answer as, as much as I can. So, but for a too long didn't read because before diving into technical details, so answer some of the questions that were asked. We are planning to make a release uh, around first quarter of next year. Of course, it was initially, our initial plan was something around last summer, but uh, we are kind of perfectionist there was some, we decided to implement something properly before releasing, instead of releasing first and then trying to fix that. So that's why there have, they have been such huge delay, but we are pretty sure that by Q1, by January, the first Android version will be available for anyone to try. We will set up a, a Sakai server so where anyone could like install the app and connect to that Sakai server and see for himself for itself how, how, how everything works. So, but our plan is to set up uh, some Sakai Apple uh, commercial entity where we'll be uh, working as helping other uh, Sakai adopters, those who have, uh, have already deployed Sakai but wants to want, want, want to offer a native Sakai app, will work together with them and will help them create their own mobile. Sakai strategy, and it will be very cost effective because uh, they can those who want to work with us, you can take our code base and start to build your Sakai Sakai strategy on top of that, or even if you have different plans, different strategy, we can help you do it do it your way. But we are sh pretty sure that with our experience and what we have achieved, we we, we can uh, help other people. So it will even more cheaper for them than setting up a whole mobile developer team. That so that's the kind of service we will, we will uh, provide to any anyone wanting to implement a Sakai strategy. So now uh, now let's start with the technical part. So. I will try in the next uh, 14 slides to explain how we did it. Of course, it won't be enough, but feel free to contact me. So, here is a, a very simplified architecture of our system. So, <coughs> I will we will go step by step into explaining. I put numbers into each node. So, the only thing familiar to us is one and two. So, one is the web client. Is that Sakai web application that as we know it that we use in the, in the browser and node 2 is the Sakai server as we know it the, the one that currently exists that where you that is deployed to Tomcat so, so as you can see for for us to really implement a uh, scalable Sakai mobile app we have to add, okay, of course, for sake of simplicity, I, I haven't, there's no, I don't show the SQL server here, so, because Sakai, as you know, needs some SQL server that can be deployed on a separate nodes, but it's, it's not shown here, just for simplicity, but we have to add additional system to make, to, to, to properly implement our Sakai mobile app. The good thing is that Okay, let's come back to. I will be coming back to this in, in 
because most of the next slide refer to element of, of this architecture. So <clears throat> in order to properly implement our mobile app, we have to make not changes but add add new stuff to the default Sakai. So the main stuff we added that we have a special Sakai tool. So it's a Sakai tool as other Sakai tools, but it's the main interface between Sakai and our other part of our system. So it's de deployed together with all the remaining tools. And in the next slide, I will explain how it works. So yeah, um, so yeah, I, I, I've been going step by step explaining each node. So we have the node one. This is our classical uh, Sakai web client that is based on where like this server side app that generate the HTML quite big, the one that we use in browser. So we haven't touched it. It's there was no need to, to make changes there. So the mode two, if we go back to our our uh, diagram, so mode two is the Sakai as we know it. So in, in there, the only thing is that we have added a special Sakai tool implemented by us that interfaces with all other parts of the system. So, and that tool, of course, uh, take advantage of the Sakai dependency in injection. So it has access to all the Sakai service API. So what, what, whatever tool is needed, those tools are injected into our special tools on Node 2. So, and the communication between this uh, node 2 and all the other nodes, it, it, it is based on, so, there are many Java uh, remote, uh, from remote, Java remoting technologies, but the current one we have been using is, there's this spring remoting technology. So, for example, node 2, our Sakai server talks with node 3, 4, and node 3 and 4 using uh, spring remoting technology. And then, yeah, so yeah, node, here I explained about node 2. So node 3 is actually where, that's actually our workhorse. So basically it by itself, it's a Java, it's, it's made of a Java app application, but it's the one do handling all, actually all the logic. So it's the main, main uh, interface between our mobile clients and our Sakai, the Sakai server node. As you can see, the, our uh, iOS and Android client do not talk directly to Sakai, but they communicate with the worker node using some our uh, uh, custom-made HTTP-based RPC protocol. So the communication between the iOS Android client to the work no, worker node is done. We, we didn't use REST, RESTful. I know there's this project K-type that is based on REST, but we didn't use that. But I will explain later why we, didn't, we, we prefer to go with some with RPC remote protocol. And this worker node actually is be, uses this, uh, there's this Hazelcast uh, Java in memory data grid technology. So basically it's a, a Java server, it's a Java application that can be deployed in a separate machine. It has, it doesn't have to be in the same machine as the actual Sakai server. So it can be put in a special de dedicated machine and it will handle all the load that, that, that the iOS and Android client will put on the system. So it will not, even if you have one million mobile client connected the Sakai server node will not be affected directly. The node 3 will handle all the communication between them. And it does a lot of caching, computes a lot of data. So some of the requests from the client do not even reach the Sakai server. So because the node, worker node knows how to uh, respond. So it, only in extreme case, it will go call back the Sakai node and fetch some data. So, and it's very easy to scale. So if at some point, you have many students with too many mobile devices. You don't have to increase your, 
the last thing you, you have to do is to increase the uh, uh, increase your Sakai server capacity. You will first have to uh, you just have to put more worker nodes, and because the worker nodes are are very lightweight, you can have more more of them than it's cheaper to scale them. Uh, adding more of them than adding more Sakai instances. And then uh, node, the node 4 is this pub sub message grouper. It's based on Apache MQ. So, <coughs> so that's uh, the key to our that's the one generating the push messaging and uh, in this slide uh, we, there's a quick description of that node for. So its main role is to listen to events to whatever happens in Sakai and then notifies our no mobile client. So whenever something changes in Sakai, so uh, this pub sub will be informed that, for example, when if you look at this screen. Uh, this screen that shows the new content. Whenever a new announcement is, let's say, added to Sakai, the first to be informed, I will show you how, will be this node 4. So when the node 4 knows that, okay, on, on this site A, there's a new announcement, it will then push that signal to the uh, mobile client node. So the mobile client node then will be informed that, okay, there's a new signal, that's it. There's a new announcement, and then those will contact uh, Worker Note Three to ask about the new announcement that was posted on Site A. So, if the Worker Note doesn't already have that new announcement, it will then uh, make a call to Sakai and fetch that message, and then return to the uh, Android client. And if and it will keep that in cache. So as as long as the cache is valid, if a, a, a mobile client asks again for that same message, it won't even talk. It, it, will, it will not even uh, node three will return it directly from its cache, cache without calling the uh, Sakai server node. So and the node four again is the one connected to the uh, Apple push notification service and Google Cloud messaging service. So it's the node 4 is the one that takes those new messages, builds a, a push notification message, and then pushes them to the node 5 and 6. And 5 and 6 will then push them to their respective uh, mobile client. So uh, as I said, 5 and 6 are the, respectively the Apple notification service and Google Cloud messaging service. They are in charge of delivering the notification messages to the to mobile client. And then node 8 and 7 are actual, are actual uh, mobile client. As you can see, they don't talk directly to node 2, which is our Sakai server. They use, they talk to um, our node 3 using an HTTP-based HTTP RPC uh, protocol. Of course, many people will ask why didn't we use the uh, RESTful API based on the KTI project. So, uh, the, of course, REST is good, but sometimes REST is not efficient for mobile devices. I, I, I know it from experience because with REST, if you want to know to to, to uh, be informed, if you want to you have to call all the time. So the mobile client ha will have to schedule maybe every five minutes, call the server and, and ask, is there something new? Is there something new? So that would quickly drain the battery and it, it will waste the bandwidth. So, and as you say, as you know, uh, on mobile, on mobile, the, one of the main weakness of mobile is, is, is the battery. So having to call every time through REST will quickly drain the battery and that will be that will that will really ruin ruin the uh, that will spoil the experience. But with our current design, 
our mobile client eight and seven do not have to call Sakai. So whenever something happens in Sakai node number two, Sakai will inform node number four, and then node, node number four will send a signal to eight and seven, which are our mobile client store. Yeah, so actually those slides are just a repeat of what I, I was explaining about our overall architecture. So some of the details of uh, our, in, in, uh, our implementation. Of, co <laughs> of course, uh, if you have more questions, feel free to ask. So this our server-side software, the addition we made to Sakai, they will work out, out of the box with any Sakai code. As long as your Sakai you didn't make any change to any service APIs or something like that. So if there's no binary break, then it should work. You don't even need to recompile your Sakai. You can just deploy some jar into as part of the libraries and then reboot your Sakai and it will be mobile enabled. And this work with Sakai from Sakai 2.7 and I'm saying Sakai 2.7 because I really didn't bother to test it with Sakai 2.6. I said, okay, let's start with Sakai 2.7. But in theory, it can even change to work with uh, Sakai even older version, but I don't really see the point. So all the features I've been showing you will, will be available from Sakai, any Sakai from Sakai 2.7 to uh, up to whatever you want. And the way we implement it, it's basically we have this, so for those of you who know Java design pattern, it's, we, we use this so-called uh, strategy design pattern. So at runtime, our tool detects what version of Sakai it is currently running and then adjust the logic depending on the, uh, on the Sakai version. So some things don't, so something are done some way in Sakai 2.7 and they are done differently if you are running Sakai 2.10, for example. So using a, a, a strategy design pattern, we could handle different, all the variation in, in, in the Sakai versions. And another good thing is that our code, we don't touch the actual underlying database. We don't write anything directly to the database. We don't add any table or any field to any table. We use all the uh, standard Sakai service, service API. If there's some custom data we need to, uh, to save, we use the, uh, the entity properties. So we put them in the property and those will be automatically saved to the database without changing any database structure. And another thing is that our, the current architecture I've shown you, it works, we have tested it on in-house, so in, we're using our own uh, server boxes. It can also be deployed on different clouds like uh, Amazon, so we have tested Amazon, but it should be very easy to, to deploy it on other cloud like Azure or something else. Or even we can make hybrid deployment, so some nodes are deployed in-house, some nodes are deployed in, in external clouds. Another feature is that this mobile app, of course I didn't have any screenshot to show, but it, it will be very easy to support other languages inter internationalized because actually all the local localization string we have in the app we just uh, at build time you have a script that takes those Sakai Java property bundles and then convert them into the into for example if we are using Android or iOS it converts it automatically to those uh, international i18n strings so that way our tool can, our mobile app will support different languages. So of course, and not everything was rosy and easy, especially on the set on the um, mobile side. One of the challenge was uh, handling the HTML content. As you know, Sakai in Sakai, most of the text content that is put on Sakai is HTML. So based on the CK editor. Of course, you might think that with on Android, Android and iOS, they have this web view widget. 
So if somebody might say, okay, just use a web view widget to show that something. But the problem is that a web view by itself is very heavy. It's you cannot put a web view in so if you have a lot of data to display, you cannot put a lot of you have a list of announcements to display. You cannot represent each announcement item as as a web view. Because the web view is a very memory heavy component. It will make the application very sluggish and for a device with low memory it will crash all the time. So one challenge was that we had to re implement a, a lightweight uh, SAX uh, based HTML parser. So we passed the uh, Sakai content for this by TK editor and we strip some HTML tag and reformat it to fit well into the into into the mobile. So that's that's something that's not 100% ready, but it's, we are really close to get having ha, having it done. So one more thing, last thing. Uh, that's one question I, I've been asked several times because I we posted a screenshot of push notification. So people have been asking how how we did implement push notification. So as the last thing, I will give you a concrete example. Of course, explain it. It in few slides is, is, I mean, it's not real. So if you can still contact me by email and ask more questions. So basically, uh, let's say you want to uh, post push and set, create and push, uh, generate a push notification whenever a new announcement is added to a site. So one first thing that will come to your mind is to use the event tracker service or notification service. It didn't work well for us because uh, the, there are some events that the event tracking service do not track. So there are some events that you really we wanted to be able to decide. Okay, let's say that let we want to be able to track whatever to be able to generate push notification out of any event we want. So whenever this function is called, we want to make we want to be able to create a push notification. So instead of going with the event tracking service or using the email notification service, we use this. Uh, so Java has this nice old feature called aspect-oriented programming. So for those of you who know, who know uh, Java, so it's basically with aspect-oriented programming, you can briefly you can intercept any call to any function and do whatever you want with the result, make modification to the result and you know in, do whatever you want. So just a concrete example. When you want to uh, whenever a message is announcement is created, there's one call to the announcement service we, we, we call this get announcement channel that returns a, a, a Sakai announcement channel. And then from that announcement channel you have this announcement message edit class that you that you fill with your message all the data and then you call commit message and that's commit message that's the function that actually generate the announcement. So instead of, of using the event tracking service, we use aspect oriented programming. So our additional Sakai tool that I mentioned that we deploy with Sakai, it has a lot of AOP aspect to intercept whatever call we want. So we can intercept whenever some cli client code is calling get announcement channel. So basically, what we do is that because this get announcement channel basically returns an announcement channel, we grab that return value before it is sent to the uh, to the uh, calling client code, and then we, using another this Java dynamic proxy, we out of that return value, we create a new uh, uh, modify announcement channel object. So it's a decorated object. That decorated object contains some, let's call it beacons that we that we listen. So that decorated announcement channel, basically, whenever you call commit message on it to commit the message, it sends a signal to our node for and inform our node for that some message has been created. So 
it uses this MQTT protocol. It's a very lightweight protocol used in this Internet of Things uh, technology. So it's very lightweight. It sends a lightweight message to Node 4. The only payload it sends is the new message ID. So Node 4, our push sub broker node, is informed that, okay, a new message was added. And then the Node 4 then will call Sakai back and then ask about that particular message and then construct a new a, a, a push notification message and push it to the 5 and 6. So, of course, it, it, it's too complex to explain in a slide, but this is, uh, I've tried to explain it here, but feel free to contact me if you have any, if you want more details. So, Basically, that's it. Any questions? There's about nine questions. <laughs> um, one person asked, um, are the codes available for Sakai 2.9 or Sakai 10? Yes. So, as I said, uh, we have tested it based on 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, or 10, as it's called. So, our code will support those versions of Sakai. Okay. The theory is to go lower, but uh, I mean, I just don't see the point. But if there's a demand for support for lower version of Sakai, yeah. And then, oh, sorry. The next question is, what is the difference between native push and Sakai notifications? So what's the difference between, oh, sorry, say again between native push yes. and Sakai notifications? Well, Sakai notification API, I understand it, it's basically used to send email announcements, e e e email notifications, email notifications. So, of course, that those, the email will go into your email inbox. If the user has I set up a, 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 an email account on his phone. Yeah, he will get that email message, and then he will open it, and then clicking on it will take him to the Sakai web version. But with our push notification, it's even better because you, whether you have your email set up on your phone or not, as long as you have our Sakai native app, you will get the push notification as a native. Android or iOS notification. Even if, if, if you have a, a, a smartwatch, you, you even get that notification straight on your smartwatch. And then clicking on it, we launch our app and show you the app in that context. Yes. And now there's, it looks like it's a couple of questions combined. Um, what do you consider an important event and can a teacher mark what is an important event or not? Of course, uh, I, I don't know that it, that feature is already in the base Sakai, but the approach we have used, we can make whatever event happening in Sakai, we can transform, we can create a push notification out of it. So it depends, whatever our client wants, we can implement it. So that's the short answer. Okay. Then someone made a comment, as students use phones and tables more and more, oh, it's, I believe they meant tablets, um, it will become more important that Sky has a native mobile app to keep up with the other LMSs. And now someone asked, um, can students configure whether they do not want to see some of the native push notifications? Uh, yes, it's, I mentioned it. Buried somewhere in my in my uh, presentation, but you can mute notification from a specific site. So, but of course, uh, currently you can just mute and unmute, unmute. But of uh, lately, I've noticed that, uh, for example, uh, Facebook offers you the option to temporary mute. So you can mute some some somebody, for example, on chat for let's say one hour or two days or one week. So we are planning to implement 
a similar feature where you could put mute a whole site or a, a tool within a site for let's say five minutes or one hour or many days. Yeah, so. And I believe you already answered this question, but someone asked um, how d it was the push notifications feature implemented? Uh, well, okay, I don't know uh, what. So I tried technical level on slide, on slide number uh, 22 to explain the uh, workflow. Uh, basically, we at runtime in the server side, we put like let's say bugs like if we, we use spy spying terms, we put some beacons that whenever something is called within a class, it notifies our some of our server. You know, in my architectural diagram is the server number four that knows everything that is happening in Sakai and then out of that creates notifications that are pushed to the device. Of course, uh, the person asking, uh, I will, we are planning to make a release by January, so you will, if you have it on, a, an Android or iOS, you will be able to really go and try it by yourself and see how it works. Okay. Um, someone asked, will our Sakai instance web services need to be exposed to the world for all users to be able to use the app? Uh, well, at least the mobile, uh, the mobile devices have to need a way to uh, connect to, to, your, to your server. So, of course, you, if you have this policy that uh, you can, we can implement that, we can have this policy that the mobile device can only connect whenever they are connected to Wi-Fi, the camp, camp, campus Wi-Fi. So it's all up depending on how you want it. It can be implemented any way you want. So. And then someone asked, where can I find the source code? <laughs> well, So, as I said, because this requires some initial R&D investment from us, so the source code, you can get it through licensing, so it's a licensing royalty free. You, you, when you uh, get the, so when we sign the licensing deal, you get the code royalty free, you can extend it to whatever you want. You can do what, you can do whatever you want with it, meaning that you can even add more features so that, that you have to contact us and discuss with us. Okay, and um, the final um, was a comment. We, IT, Y, U, D, L, L, C, they are also working on a Sky Mobile app, and they gave a, e a web address of where you could check it out and provide feedback. And I believe that was all the questions, and we've also run out of time. So thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. And thank you for all the questions and being patient while um, we answered all of them. And thank you for joining us today at the Sakai Virtual Conference. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.